Hello everyone, in today's video uh, we're going to be getting started with some VATSIM stuff in the next week or so. So I thought this would be a great time to kind of get everybody uh, kind of familiarized for what VATSIM is and how to get started. You know, when a lot of people think about VATSIM, uh, they're very, very intimidated by the possibility of, you know, talking to real people on the radio and they're being judged and they're incompetent. But guess what? Everybody makes mistakes. Don't panic. So to get to it, it's pretty simple. We're just going to go online. We'll go up to VATSIM just like this. It's going to bring you to this lovely website, and there's this little button that says join here. I'm already a member here. I've been a member for, oh, geez, like 10, 15 years or something like that. Of course, how many total hours do I have on VATSIM? Not many. But basically, you're going to click here. You're going to get a special number. You're going to have to put your real name in. Again, now you can have a little bit of fun with that. And then, of course, after you do all that, you're going to have the ability to go ahead and sign in. Uh, when you go to sign in, you, again, you come up to the pilot page. And what you have is you have this little dashboard thing that says right up at the top, membership dashboard. And then after you go to that main page, it's going to take you to dashboard. I'm not going to share that dashboard with you because it's got some, obviously, private information on it. But the important thing that you want to know here is uh, after you've kind of gone through and uh, read through some of the different pieces here, this is going to be this option that says flight planning. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, the first way is you can kind of just come in here and uh, press uh, file a flight plan and type in your individual details. The good news is if you're brand new to this, uh, don't panic at all. Uh, the reason you don't need to is you only need to put a star next to all these. I'll actually include all the items that have a star. Coming down here, like as you can take a look, there's a lot of really fancy little options here. Don't panic with any of this. It's not going to cause any issues. Now, for those of you who uh, put together real world flight plans, this is great because it's literally going to be exactly what you want. So for example, let's say I want to go ahead and uh, use you know, my standard airplane. I always fly an IR-725 Quebec. 25 Quebec. Uh, let's say we want to do a VFR. A type is a Cessna 172. You just type that in over light. Uh, we can type in equipment. Now, everybody panics when they see equipment here. What is an equipment code? An equipment code is basically what is the aircraft capable of? S means standard. So if you are, for example, type in a cow equipment codes and just press enter there, it actually brings you to this nice little documentation that explains everything. As I said, S means everything. So what I like to do too is not just S. Uh, S, by the way, simply means you have nav, ILS, VOR, stuff like that, ADF. But the other one I usually come down here too is include our GPS. So you can see of GNSS. So if you do have a GPS, you can come in here and go boop, SG. So now we're code SG, meaning standard, plus a GNSS. Now there's a lot of really fancy ones in here, but I wouldn't worry about any of these because that big old fashioned S is pretty much every single item. Again, as you can see here, S basically equals OLV, if you want to think about it another way. Once that detail has been covered, we can talk about what transponder we have here. Now the transponder, of course, uh, we have, um, there's different types of transponder codes as well. Just to make your life more interesting, we type in transponder codes. Now the nice thing is this isn't critical. So you don't have to panic on that one too, too much. So we know to say what kind of mode are we? Mode C is mode A and C, mode S, we are mode C. So I'm just gonna come in here and press C. Don't worry about it. You just notice that the default there was an L, which simply says we have everything in the universe available. We can put that one in here too. Don't worry about it, it's not gonna hurt anything. So now what we do is we come down here, we simply define what our departure point is. Let's say we're coming from Hartford. We say what time we're leaving the blocks. This is the time uh, you intend to wheel backwards. Um, for the good people at um, VATSIM, you want to do this preferably about a half an hour before you actually roll off. Let's see, it's about 1.38. Watch out though, it's UTC time. So make sure you convert to the correct amount of time. Again, they don't make this easy for you. I don't know why, but what are you supposed to do? So let's see, 1.38 plus four would be a 5.38, but it's a 24 hour. So 5.38 would be 17.38. So we'll go up to 1800 will be our block time. That'll be six o'clock in the evening, UTC or two o'clock for us. Altitude, uh, we're gonna keep it pretty low. We'll say 2,500 feet. Airspeed, it's a Cessna 110. Arrival is where we're going. Uh, let's see, we wanna go up to, uh, let's keep this nice and simple. So this is departure. Let's go up to, uh, let's do Pissfield today. Why not? Set as arrival. Looks pretty groovy to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and type that one in KPSF. Alternate, whatever. Uh, time on route. Uh, looks like it's going to take us 44 minutes. 0044. Fuel endurance. If it's a Cessna, you got about 5 hours and 30 minutes on board. Now, you're probably sitting here going, wow, is there an easier way to do any of this? Mm, you can actually import them. Or what you could do, of course, is you can write them up on your own as well if you want to do, like, you know, your own sky vector or float. You can also come down here and uh, define the route details, in which case I'm just going to say direct. I'm not going to do any fancy flying or anything like that. Again, all this stuff, don't panic about it. This is uh, going to be for advanced folks. One thing you do want to do, though, see where it says voice rules. If you intend on using your voice to control the airplane, make sure you actually dial this in. If you're really, really, really new, feel free to use text only. A uh, voice is fine. You can also do receive voice. And usually during remarks, I really say... 
let people know it's your first flight down here if it's the first time you've ever done it. Once you're ready to go, don't pull the trigger on this until you're actually um, intending on actually flying at that time. Once you hit this trigger, you're going to be sending it to their computers, and they're going to be the ones who are going to go ahead and decide it. Now, you're sitting here going, okay, don't push the button. Don't worry, I won't push the button. Don't worry, I'll get to that. So how do we know if we're going to have to talk to anybody? Now, you're sitting there going, hmm, what's up with that? That's some map. So watch this. This is an interactive map of everything going on in the world. Uh, one of the things I like to do, this is all Vatsim, by the way. So there's this neat little ATC button I always turn on. It'll actually light up the different controlled zones that you see. For example, I noticed that uh, Boston here has a ground controller, hence the little G. I also noticed that Philadelphia down here has themselves a ground controller as well as an A, which means an approach controller. Starting to get intimidated yet? Don't panic, it's not as bad. We also know that Binghamton uh, also has an approach, which is a little interesting because I've never flown up that way. And we know, of course, us, we're sitting down here basically in the center of a good old-fashioned uh, Connecticut here. So do we need to talk to anybody on this flight? Well, maybe. I know you're sitting there going, well, there's nobody covering us right now. Let's just go. Well, the problem you're going to have, and this is where it gets kind of scary, is the fact if you take off, uh, it's assumed that you've done everything you needed to do for your flight plan. However, if somebody signs in at any point, let's say a Bradley approach signs in and takes control of this airspace, you're expected to talk to them and let them know you'd like to pick up your flight plan. Again, these are little things you're going to kind of get the hang of. But the greatest thing is you don't have to do that if there are no air traffic controllers around. So here's the tip. Go flying somewhere up here, and you're never, ever going to have to worry about talking to anybody. You can just experience what it's going to be like flying in VATSIM without panicking. Okay, so with that all out of the way, let's go take a look at your VATSIM client. So I'm going to go ahead and type in vPilot is the one we use for flight sim. You go on here, it's super, oh my gosh, this thing is so easy to use. You literally download it, install it, and then you set yourself up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now, the way vPilot works is super duper 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 simple. What it does is it talks to the flight simulator. So in this case, uh, let's go ahead and uh, click on the fly button here. And now we're in business. So now that we're in the simulator at our airport, oh, by the way, never, ever, 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 ever start on the runway. Doing that is ever verboten. Don't do that. Now that we have vPilot all set up, oh, this is a super easy tool. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to settings. You're going to find things like what is your user's name? What are you using for different settings? All those kind of things. Again, I'm not going to do that because there's some personal information on there. I'm going to skip that step. It's very self-explanatory. You can also define what flight models are going to go where and things like that. And it's a very, very straight field. I keep doing that to force a habit. The other thing you can do too is if you press the flight plan button, check this out. You can actually define your own flight plan. And you can even fetch a flight plan from the server if you wanted to. Notice uh, since we're not connected to the network, it won't let it get us for it. Lame. Remember, we did not file that flight plan on the website. Therefore, it will not be on the network. But again, you can always come in here and I love how you can just do 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 and go ahead and clear this out. I'm going to clear this out. We're going to do the same thing we did before. And again, you can have a lot of fun just sort of dialing all those details in. And so you don't have to worry about going back and forth, back and forth. You can even save the ones you like. Once you are ready for the moment of truth to join the VATSIM server, you come up to the top left, you press connect. It's going to ask you all this critical information. Uh, you can also say uh, connect as an observer. What this simply means is you do not send your position to the rest of the world. So if we were, for example, flying like a shared cockpit, like it says right here, it basically would prevent me from having a duplicate of my airplane. So for this case, I'm actually going to connect as an observer and press connect as an observer. So now that I'm here, my airplane isn't physically in their world. However, um, I can hear everything that's going on. Now I notice, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing that. Now I notice, just like we saw in the VATSIM map, that there's a BGM approach on 118.600. Now you're probably sitting here going, well, how does this work now? Well, this is where it gets kind of cool. The radio in the cockpit is the radio that they're using over here now that we're connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here. Let's go ahead and uh, dial them in real quick and see what we get. So we need a 118.600. All of a sudden it matters, right? Man, this really, really will change up your game once you start playing with it a little bit. 11860. I'm going to go ahead and press the swap button. So as soon as I did that, I'm now connected to a voice server that is that particular person's voiceover. Keep in mind, if you remember back in the day, there was nothing there that we could actually see. So if we were to actually transmit right now, this person, even though uh, there's mountains and stuff in the world, world, which would block your view, will actually be able to hear you. Now, it's worth noting that to set all that stuff up, you're going to have to go into your buttons. So speaking of which, if you actually come back over here, you can see that I've bound it to one of the buttons that I have over on my joystick to make it a little bit easier to press that button. So now you're probably sitting here saying, oh, this is getting really real here. You know, all these things are going on. Again, just join as an observer at one of the major airports and listen for a while, and you'll be amazed at the different things you're seeing and hearing. But at this point, you should be comfortable enough to at least create an account, 
set vpilot up so that you can actually come in here. By the way, this server and this all this weather comes from VATSIM. All the traffic now comes from VATSIM. So make sure you have it disabled inside of your regular uh, simulator too. Otherwise, you're going to see duplicates of some things, which could cause some issues. But again, uh, by the way, we couldn't fly this vfar because the weather is too rough for us. So just kind of something to think about. Now, one cool thing I like, I really enjoy, is the fact that you can actually change which one of these servers that you're on. Like right now, I have just COM1, COM2. I could actually flip this over to COM2 if I wanted to. Again, you'll notice that this is now the selected one for transmissions and receptions. So what I'll do a lot of times, is just like you do in the real world, you set one of the radio frequencies to like one of the main controllers, then you set the other radio frequency to one of the other controllers, so that you can kind of keep listening to them ear to ear kind of a thing. And knowing how, how your equipment works is really really important here because if you're on the wrong switch here it'll cause this to transmit to the wrong switch as well so for example if i come over here real quick you'll see that i'm transmitting if i were to tap the transmission button you can see that it transmitted on that channel not the main channel so again now you have to know your airplane know your airplane before you come to vatsim all right hopefully this video was helpful as far as uh, getting you over the i'm going to hit the disconnect button here because nothing bad's going to happen we were part of the server i was an observer they never saw us and don't panic Hopefully this video is helpful as far as I'm making you realize it's not as scary a setup as you think. In the future, we'll actually do a little bit of flying with VATSIM, and I'd love to do it as a live stream as well. Enjoy.